Will Bruce and Damien be able to unravel the mystery of the Shadow War before Talia al Ghul and Slade Wilson kill one another? Well, let's hop into the pages of Robin. Issue number 14, the penultimate issue of this crossover event, and find out together, shall we? So then, picking up directly from where the last issue left off, Batman and Robin are sifting through the debris of what used to be Batman Inc.'s headquarters. Ghostmaker and the others were supposed to protect the secret society of supervillains after Destro kind of just guilt-tripped Batman into doing it. Now they're gone, though, sprung by Deathstroke, and while Batman believes they may be going to ground to hide out until the heat dies down, Robin knows different. He knows they're headed directly into a confrontation with his mother in the League of Shadows. How does Damien know that? It they don't say. This is just one of those types of stories that only work if characters make bold leaps in logic. It's just a good thing that this leap in logic turns out to be correct. The supervillains and the assassins finally get a chance for one big knockdown drag out fight, and I will give all the credit in the world to this splash page here. If you're a fan of lower tier, mostly forgotten DC characters like me, it's a veritable who's who of cult favorites. In fact, hey, if you really want to impress me in the comment section down below, try and name every character here if you can. I bet it's harder than it looks. <laughs> of course, the big battle is between Deathstroke and Talia herself. Talia could very easily have left this to her henchmen, but instead she wants to get involved herself. It's also here we discover Talia actually had no idea about the existence of Respawn in the first place and that she basically had another kid running around, nor does she care. I mean, she probably should. Her father stole her DNA and created another child in secret without her knowing that he ended up torturing. But hey, you know what? Talia can't get catching feels right now, can she? It could very well distract from all the mindless action that's in this issue. Batman, Robin, and the rest of Batman Inc. are also overhead too, ready to airdrop in when Bruce says that he wants Damien to stay behind. Yes, that's right, even though we've been over this sort of thing a hundred times since this crossover event started, Batman and Robin need to have another big familial fight. Damien is fed up that his father always sees him as a child, but Batman tries to go out of his way to alleviate his guilt over Alfred's death, saying that it was really always Batman's fault at the end of the day, and how he feels terrible that Alfred's death has been on Damien's conscience for so long and that he couldn't possibly stand to see him get hurt in the crossfire of this fight too, not that any of it matters, because Damien decides he's gonna jump anyway, parachute or no parachute. If it feels like the actual interpersonal relationship stuff between Batman and Robin has actively been moving backwards since Shadow War started, don't worry, because we know it's not going to end here. There's going to be a whole sequel Mark Wade series in September we're gonna have to read. Now, before we can head on to the finish line of this story, we still need to deal with one last piece of side business. You see, Ghostmaker, the brand new OC anime inspired super villain turned superhero has to have a big one on one sword duel with Angel Breaker the even newer anime inspired OC super villain turns out these two actually know each other which is again actually admittedly kind of funny considering that these two represent a really interesting trend in brand new Batman characters so the fact that they already have a pre-existing relationship and want to fight each other did make me smile just a bit I mean don't get me wrong it adds absolutely nothing to the proceedings that is Shadow War, but still, you gotta take what you can get in this story. Robin ends up coming face to face with Rose Wilson again, who breaks the sad news to him that his clone brother Respawn has died. Man, you know, poor Ravager really has ping-ponged back and forth with no real agency in this story, has she? She was working with Damien, then she was working with her father. And now, right here at the end, she's just giving exposition. Sadly, Batman and Robin end up showing up too late as Talia managed to gain the upper hand in her battle with Deathstroke and stabbed him, assumedly to death, but we know he's not dead because we've already seen artwork for Dark Crisis and he's gonna be in that. Well, alright then, I guess the Shadow War is over then. Point one assassins, but who is the mysterious imposter? Well, you don't have to ask that question much longer because he shows up in the room to gloat. And you know what? It's right around here I'm gonna put up the spoiler tag. Don't say I didn't try and warn you because to properly talk about this, I will need to reveal who the ultimate mastermind was. So as it turns out, the secret villain behind Shadow War was actually not a super villain at all, but instead it was Geoforce of the Outsiders. Yeah, I know, right? Honestly, I'm of two minds about this reveal. On one hand, it's like, Jesus Christ, seriously, Geoforce? No one liked this guy as a hero and I'm expected to take him seriously as a villain? And yet, on the other hand, I have to actually tip my hat to Joshua Williamson here for putting together a mystery that actually makes a lot of sense when we stop and examine the clue. 
shows. Prince Brion hated Raish for the crimes that he committed against his nation of Markovia, and he was actually there in the first issue trying to pressure the UN to see that he was punished for his crimes that were done internationally. He also had a Markovian accent that he was trying desperately to hide from Batman, who would know him because Geoforce was part of Batman's own Outsiders team back in the day. Which, of course, Geoforce would know to go to Gamby for a Deathstroke costume because one of the Gamby brothers is who made Black Lightning's costume and Black Lightning was on the same team as him. Geoforce was also able to use his power to move the Earth to escape from every crime scene and move around all the different factions without being seen. But of course, the biggest clue of all is that Deathstroke raped and exploited Tara Markov, Brion Markov's sister, which of course explains his actions right here, right now as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Robin issue number 14, everybody. And once again, this Shadow War story just continues to feel all over the damn place. Even though I cannot deny that there are germs of interesting ideas going on in this story and certainly stuff I like, the whole thing just doesn't gel together. I can't help but escape the feeling of this was just a story in the pages of Robin or in the pages of Deathstroke and wasn't nearly as long. It would probably end up being a lot better and a lot more enjoyable. Geoforce being the real bad guy here was certainly an unexpected twist. I don't know if it makes the story better or anything. I will say, though, bringing up Deathstroke's very many very personal crimes against him and what he did to Terra. Honestly, to me, really kind of serves as the ultimate ending of any sympathy that Deathstroke could possibly have had previously in this story. Most writers dance around the terror stuff and how truly horrible Deathstroke is, but Joshua Williamson runs right headlong into it here in this story. We have an Omega issue left, but I know there's not going to be a ton of resolution in this story because they've basically already announced that this story is going to have a sequel and we're going to have to read that if we want to see Batman and Robin ultimately finally reconcile. Overall, I'd give this one a 6.5 out of 10. It's a mixed bag, but there's certainly more cons than pros, and I'd be lying if I said the longer this story went on, the less I was actually enjoying it. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content, too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and, well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.